Hello lovelies and welcome back and happy new year. Woo! Happy 2021! For those of you uh, who are new to the channel then welcome. Please like and subscribe and all of those lovely lovely things. And for those of you who are not new to the channel and saw the <laughs> Christmas live stream that I did. Um, I apologise uh, for drinking two bottles of pink champagne in an hour and a half. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for coming along to that. Um, I was fine. Uh, but I hope you had a lovely new year. Um, and I'm back! Yay! <laughs> So if you can already tell by the title of this video, I am recapping my 2020. Potentially the best and worst year of my entire life. And I don't just mean because of COVID. Because I know everyone had a shit year because of COVID, but mine was just fucking awful. So let's recap it. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't really know how I'm gonna do this. Maybe I'm gonna do it month by month. Um, let's start with January. Uh, January was a really good month for me. Um, I celebrated New Year's Eve, New Year's Day with my partner at the time. We had a really quiet New Year's. It wasn't what I wanted to do, um, but it was what he wanted to do because he didn't like going out and doing fun things because Fuck that. Um, so we had a really, really quiet New Year's and actually it was quite lovely and we went for a walk on New Year's and things like that. And January was a really good month for me. I was going to the gym regularly with a personal trainer in preparation for my surgery. Um, one thing to say about January, I lost my job in December of 2019. So I used to work for the Taint Galleries. If you would like a full video on the awful, awful experience that working at Tate was, then please let me know in the comments just down below and I would gladly make that video for you because I no longer work for Tate. They are terrible. So I lost my job on the 27th of December 2019. So I actually went into January unemployed, which was entirely new for me. I had never been unemployed in my life, but I had quite a lot of savings and inheritance and things like that to go through. Um, so I wasn't super worried about money and I was really focused on my surgery. So I wasn't kind of looking for another job at the time, kind of specifically. So January for me was a really good month. I was in good health. I was going to the gym all the time. I had still gained a bit of weight, but not that much weight. I was having sex regularly. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So yeah, January in all was a pretty good month for old Stephanie over here. Which leads me on to February. So February was one of the most pivotal months of my entire life. Um, so I had my gender reassignment surgery in February 2020 on the 15th of February 2020. I had a great time in hospital. I was recovering super, super well. I was surrounded by friends and family and I got to be around my friends and family and things like that. And fun fact, I actually found out that I got a new job for Buckingham Palace whilst in hospital recovery. So I had my surgery on the 15th and then I think on the 16th or the 17th, I found out that I got the job at Buckingham Palace. So it was a very good week, um, but it was not to be because I came home on the 21st of February um, and I started to have crap tons of uh, complications with my vagina. Yeah, and it was only the beginning, um, but I had my mum with me, which was lovely, uh, but my mum, and I are big foodies um, and it wasn't super great for my recovery to have eaten so unhealthily. Um, but that's not my mum's fault. <laughs> that's my fault. I am an adult. Um, so yeah, I had my mum with me and I had my, my partner with me quite a lot at the time, my ex-partner. So it wasn't so bad uh, until the end of February when I started getting all of my complications, which leads us in to March. 
so March um, started with basically my vagina falling apart. I had wound dehesion in my vagina, which is when you have a surgery and the um, surgical seams, uh, they tear apart and they start to um, just disintegrate. Uh, yeah, and my vagina was being held in place by nothing more than gaps and, and stitches and it was fucking disgusting and I hated every single second of it. So that was the start of March. Um, I got older. <laughs> On the 15th of March was my 23rd birthday. So I aged. So my vagina was falling apart and I aged. And then on the 16th of March, the world as we know it was changed forever when we were plunged into a nationwide lockdown. Now for me, this wasn't a big deal. I wasn't starting my job until May. I uh, was recovering from major surgery, so I was really high risk. So I wasn't planning on going outside anyway. So for me, lockdown wasn't a huge thing, um, but my complications were getting worse and worse. Alongside wound dehesion, I was also suffering immensely from hypergranulation, which is when excess tissue forms over scarred kind of suture marks. And obviously my suture marks were extra scarred because they were falling apart and, and it was awful and there was a smell. It was, oh. So yeah, March was kind of unprecedented. I got old, we were plummeted into a lockdown and it was, it was what it was, I guess. Um, April, hmm. April was bad. I developed uh, post-operative depression, um, which is super, super normal, but I couldn't see my family. I couldn't see my friends. I had no one to support me. Um, and I started to have uh, suicidal thoughts for the first time in, um, maybe about seven years. And that was really difficult. I was still with my partner at the time, but we hadn't seen each other. I was adhering to all of the rules, which was really annoying because I saw so many people not adhering to all of the rules. And um, yeah, it was, um, I thought the hardest month. I had gained a lot of weight through comfort eating. Um, and through boredom as well. I was recovering from major surgery. I was just chilling out in my house, you know. Um, and that was when May happened. And May was my first attempt at self-harm since I was 17. The suicidal thoughts had just gotten too much, the post-operative depression had gotten too much, the um, really kind of disgusting complications were just too much and I couldn't do it. And I, um, I remember calling my partner at the time on the phone, I had a knife. Um, and that was when my partner decided to intervene. Um, and so the first week of June, I went to stay with my partner. And the day I arrived, <laughs> you're not gonna believe it. My partner's, um, a very close family member, a parent, um, he passed away the day I arrived. So I had gone to my partner's house to heal um, and to get over my kind of suicidal thoughts and my anxiety and things like that and my post-operative depression and lose the weight that I had gained and um and his parent died and so it, it all just got thrown out of the window and all of a sudden I had to be there for them and and in a way I was I was happy because I got to get out of my own head and I got to just be there to support my partner in everything that they needed, which I was more than happy to do. And, and I felt privileged to have the opportunity to do that. Um, and so I stayed with him for the duration of June. It's also important to note, uh, my job at Buckingham Palace, I was due to start in May. 
I was made redundant from because of COVID. So I was unemployed again. I was running out of my savings and my inheritance. And I was looking after my grieving partner. So that was June. Which leads us on very nicely to July. So my grieving partner um, was grieving and I am not gonna hold that against him in any way, shape or form, but it completely changed his mind about our future and all of our plans about moving in together, about our life together. Um, and suddenly I was very alone and just a spare part in someone else's life. And then, <laughs> For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, um, will know. I used to have a channel with an old friend. And in July, after dealing with surgery, complications, post-operative depression, suicidal thought, thoughts, and a grieving partner, they decided to let their true colours show and revealed that they were a jealous, vindictive, gaslighting piece of... Mm. And so, whilst dealing with all of everything else, I took over the channel to protect all of the work I had done over two years, my stories that I had shared, the intimate moments that I had shared. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was the strangest time because we were so close, but the jealousy and the anger was just too much. It got far too much and I just wasn't having it anymore. So, we close the chapter on that particular person who will not be named ever. Um, but if they're watching, um, <laughs> so August, August was when things started to turn around, kind of. I had found someone to move into my flat because my partner no longer wanted to live with me because they were grieving. Um, and it was an old friend, so kind of felt okay. And I interviewed for and got two jobs. One of them I was had my offer retracted because COVID. And then the other one is the job I'm still in now and I love it so much. I work in a museum in London and it's amazing. Um, and the team there are amazing and they love the fact that I'm trans, they love the fact that I do YouTube and things like that. So it's been good and they've been very supportive. Um, in August also, I I had lost quite a bit of the weight I'd gained. So during my post-operative depression um, and in the three months between February and June uh, or February and May, uh, I had gained about four stone. Yeah, through uh, comfort eating and boredom. It didn't help with the suicidal thoughts. Um, so I had actually lost quite a bit of weight. I'd lost uh, kind of about nearly two stone of the four stone I had gained, which was super exciting for me. So August was a good month. And then September was a great month, kind of. Start of September, started my new job on the 9th of September. I was very excited and we were out of a lockdown, yay. So I started my new job and I felt like I had purpose again. Uh, despite the fact I had gone up two dress sizes, I felt like I had purpose. And then, um, I decided to break up with my partner because um, after months of being on standby and after months of um, not dealing with my psychological issues and just being there for them whilst our plans changed, whilst I watched them become uh, just a completely absorbed person of themselves. I was just like, do you know what? We don't need each other anymore. I don't need to be there for you and you don't need to be there for me. We no longer have a future. You've made that very clear, but I want to be alone and I want to do my new job and live and all of that stuff. And so September and October was pretty all right. I'm not gonna lie. I was just working, 
the imminent threat of lockdown 2.0 and things like that. And then of course, in November, lockdown 2.0. And I gained back all of the weight I had lost, all that two stone. Gained it right back out of sheer boredom. But at least this time I was working from home, kind of. Um, and so I had a little bit of a purpose. Yeah, little bit of a purpose. Not much of one, but um, a little bit of one. Um, and the psychological effects of gaining back two stone in a month um, and having suddenly been single and no longer having the security blanket of having a partner was um, definitely challenging. But a highlight for me of November, I got to, I like all the attention I'm being like, here's my cleavage. Um, <laughs> Uh, one thing about weight gain that I've really enjoyed has been these. Um, so no, um, one great thing I loved about doing November is I put out a video series of videos for Transgender Awareness Week and the manifestation of those videos went to a charity and it was great and I did a new video every day. I think I ended up doing nine videos in total. And I actually raised um, over 130 pounds for a charity through you guys watching my monetized ads. So thank you very, very much um, because it's, it's all going to charity now. So yeah, I'm loving that. <laughs> December, we were back in lockdown, my Christmas got cancelled. I was very, very ill and then I suddenly realised that I needed to take positive steps in my life. Uh, I was tired of being unhappy all the time, I was tired of my suicidal thoughts, I was tired of not addressing my post-operative depression. So I booked in to have doctor's appointments and therapy and things like that to finally address them. Um, and so December kind of felt like a turning point for me. I spent Christmas alone, which I love. I'm sorry if any of my family members are watching this. I love Christmas without you guys. It's so hectic at home. I love Christmas alone. It's really peaceful. So that was really, really lovely. And I got to do a live with you guys, which was nice. Um, but yeah, 2020 uh, was horrendous. And um, it was a year of uh, high highs in terms of getting my vagina and then low lows when my vagina started to fall apart and I wanted to commit suicide. Um, so that's it. Uh, <laughs> I hope that you had a palatable 2020, um, but let's never mention it again, shall we? Don't even mention it in the comments. Just mention something positive in the comments. Don't mention about your 2020, none of that, because we're leaving it behind. I just wanted to make this video to make a, a physical documentation of the fact I had reviewed my 2020. Um, so leaving all of that negativity behind, 2021 is going to be a very exciting year. Please join me next week where I will be talking about some of my goals for 2021. These are personal goals and channel goals and things like that. So next week, Wednesday, I will be talking about that. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed this really kind of low level angry recap of 2020, then give this video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, maybe comment, all of those things. But do you know what? I'm just glad it's over. And now I never, ever, ever have to talk about it ever again. Okay, I will see you guys soon for another video. Bye!